Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be installing a tyre pressure monitoring system. I've talked to a few friends about them for a little while now and no one's really taken the plunge. So with Goodwood coming up tomorrow, I thought I'd grab one on Amazon, delivered next day on Prime and uh, get it on the car and see how it goes. So in this video, I'm going to cover the install process. Uh, we're going to set the unit up, make sure it works on all four wheels. I'm going to compare accuracy versus my Longacre tyre pressure gauge that I've used for quite a while now. And then we're going to drive to Goodwood tomorrow and we're going to see how it works on track, see if it gives us an idea of temperature, see how the pressures adjust, whether or not they update at a reasonable sort of interval, um, check that I can swap them between wheels, and then hopefully it'll give, uh, give you guys a bit of an insight into whether or not this is worth having. So this is the box for the tyre pressure monitoring system. This is all the things it can supposedly do. So let's pop the box open and have a look. Instruction guide. So these are the sensors, which are all marked up. Front right, rear right, rear left, front left. And this, I'm guessing, is... It's very difficult to do one-handed. The actual unit itself. I'm going to try and give that a shake out. Let's have a look. So that's it. That's going to be the tyre pressure gauge. I wonder if I press on. Something there. There you go. So this is going to give us um, both temperature and pressure, apparently, on all of the four uh, four sensors. So there's a little sticky pad location underneath, solar panel on top. So the idea is, and I haven't looked at this yet, the idea is it's going to sit up on the dashboard Something like that, maybe. Not sure yet. Maybe a bit further forward. Or, depending how it sits, I might even tuck it. If I tuck it in, if I tuck it in there, it's going to hold itself, but I don't know if the solar panel's going to work. So, I'll give it a go. I'll get it plugged in, get it working, and we'll see how it looks first. So, these are the little sensors. I've actually weighed one of these, and it weighs 8 grams. So hopefully not enough to actually affect the wheel balance at all. And something that is quite promising is that there's actually a metal thread inside there. So it hopefully shouldn't suffer too much from being taken on and off too many times. Now in the box here, they actually give you a little tool to tighten it with. They actually give you lock nuts and a locking spanner. Now I'm not going to use them simply because I change between wheels and tyres so much that I want to be able to take these on and off quite quickly. So what I will use is this little tool which should help me tighten it up a bit quicker. So we're just going to go to the front wheel here. I'm going to pop off the existing dust cap and front right. Yeah, front right. The idea is that you just spin it on like that. And I'm guessing that's it. Little tool here that you can use to tighten it up a bit more if you need to doesn't appear to do much. Not really sure what the idea of that tool is actually. Maybe that's for taking the top off, who knows. But that's dead tight on there now. It sticks out a little bit, so possibly not ideal, but we're going to get out on track and we're going to see how it works. Although, looking at that, on certain tracks there could be a concern that you'd hit that quite a concern that you could hit that actually so I think if I were going to keep this you'd want to run a shorter valve stem here to tuck that in within the rim but we'll fire it up and we'll give it a go and we'll see how it works oh, wow so I've just screwed the four sensors on and I've just come to pick up the unit to check how we turn it on and calibrate and it looks like it's already done so that is now showing me 26 26 26 27 which doesn't sound too bad to me. Right, this won't be the easiest thing in the world to hold the camera and film, but we just checked the tyre pressures on there, showing 26, 26, 26, 27. So we're just going to come round to the front. How can I do this? If I hold it like that, it's not going to happen, is it? How do you do this with one hand, people? Here we go, this might work. What have we got there? Focus. Hopefully you can see that, that is showing. Bang on, 26. 
and that is exactly what the uh, what the TPMS is showing. So really pleased with the accuracy. I have actually gone round to check some of the other tyres. They all read exactly the same. So really uh, really confident that the accuracy is pretty good. It certainly matches my long acre gauge. This is pretty interesting. Currently only got two showing. Um, apparently it's got an auto on off, which I wasn't sure how that worked. But so we've got two showing there. Apparently, it picks up signal once you fire the engine up or start to drive. So if we just go and tap that valve a few times, pops up. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So we're back from a drive, um, and really interesting just to look at what the temperatures and the pressures are doing. So we're showing 30 front left, 31 front right. That was actually showing even temperature and pressure when I was on the road, and that's literally just dropped in the last minute I've been parked up in the garage. And then the rears, you can see, got them at 31 each, but they're around 10 degrees colder than the fronts. So we've just been for an enthusiastic uh, country drive, and that gives you a really good idea of what they're doing. So it works fantastically. Um, so that's risen from the cold pressures we set. We set the cold pressures in the hope that they would rise and all be even once we, once we got back. So yeah, really pleased with it. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but... Every wheel where the TPMS has been fitted has this mark here. Now all I can assume is the centrifugal force of the whole valve stem moving out. And that's actually quite a bit of deflection to do that. And they've all got it. If I come up to the front, got the same here. That's quite a lot of deflection to do that. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that. So as you can see there, the sensors do sit out further from the rim than I'd like, especially with a long or standard length valve stem. Now I've done two track days on these since filming the rest of this vid and I've not had any issues, but I'm not completely happy with how far they how far they stand out. So I would definitely recommend fitting some shorter valve stems on them. I've actually got this video here from Nige of Pinderwagon fame. Um, what you can see here, he's actually put sellotape on the rim one thing to note there, the labels have worn off on his because he did a wet track day. So it's worth noting you might want to paint pen or mark them in another way. Nigel's actually got the short stubby valve stem fitted here. And as you can see, it can only deflect about one or two mil at the most. And it stands out from the rim an awful lot less than mine. So that's definitely the way to go with that. Right, well, it's a couple of days after Goodwood and we're back in the garage and I'm pleased to report the tyre pressure monitoring system worked really well. So I set the pressures to 28 cold all round before I left on Tuesday morning. Uh, on the drive over the pressures rose to 29 all round and to be honest the temperatures didn't really change a great deal. Maybe one or two degrees indicated change on the drive across but it's a fairly slow drive, fairly cold conditions so I'm not too surprised about that. Now when we got to track I set all the tyres to 24 cold all round before going out on track. Uh, after the first session, the front left went up to 33, the front right went up to 31, and the rears both rose to 28. So I was able to leave the rears exactly where they were. I dropped 3 PSI out of the front left, and I dropped 1 PSI out of the front right to get them down to 30 hot. We then went out and did another session and I was able to see that the front right remained at 30 hot, so that was good. But on track, actually during some flat out driving, the front left jumped to 31 hot. Although when we came down in on a cool down lap, that front left dropped back down to 30. So previously I would have checked those pressures and gone 30 hot, still fine. But I knew now from what I'd seen out on track that what I really needed to do was to drop the front left another 1 PSI. So when I came to head out onto the next session, they had dropped a bit because I'd been sat in the pits waiting. So the front left was at 28 and the front right was showing 29. So it's a bit 1 PSI imbalance. Not huge, but obviously you'd rather you'd rather they were the same. So I'm pleased to report when we then went back out on track, within half a lap, both the fronts were sat then at 30 hot. So I can definitely confirm that the tyre pressure monitoring system has already given me some information I didn't have before. What it also showed me, the temperature reading, it's only an estimate on temperature, bearing in mind it's not reading the carcass temperature, it's reading the temperature of the air within the tyre, but the front left reached 44 degrees and the front right reached about 37, 38 degrees. 
Now, it's a clockwise circuit, so the front left is the one that gets the biggest hammering, so that's exactly what you'd expect to find. So, although not to be taken as gospel, the temperature estimates are also quite handy, and it really lets you know what you're doing and helps you set the car up and get the best from the tyres. Now, I've not looked at this, but there we go. I've just opened the door to the car, and you can see the TPMS has fired itself up. So now we're back in the garage and the car's stone cold. It's been sat here a couple of days. You can see what I was talking about. So the rears are still at 25, 25. The fronts, the front left is at 23 and the front right is at 24. Now this is because when it got hot on the clockwise circuit, I had to let the front left down slightly more. So it's really interesting to see that difference there. What's also interesting is that the fronts are at 15 degrees C and the rears are at 14. Now you might think that's a very small difference but I've got a radiator in the garage at the front of the car and the rear tyres are nearest the garage door where it's coldest. So it's definitely a pretty good system for the money. It's only 30 quid on Amazon. So this one I believe is the Favato HK08 and overall I'm really happy with it. There are obviously loads of different versions of this on Amazon, also on eBay, made by a load of different brands that all look identical, all got slightly different names, all between £25 and £30. If you'd like to buy the exact one I've got, which I believe was the Favato unit, I'll pop a link in the description and hopefully there'll be a link somewhere in the video here for you to click. It should take you straight to the page to buy that very unit. So that was just a quick one for you today guys, just going over the tyre pressure monitoring system. Overall I'm really happy with it, well worth the 30 quid that it cost. Even if it doesn't last that long, it's given me some really useful data that I'm going to keep hold of going forward. Hopefully it will last long, it's got a one year warranty so obviously I'll use that if I need to, but so far I'm really impressed, really pleased and I definitely recommend one. If you guys liked the video today, please remember to like and subscribe. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover, any topics that you think have been out there, questions raised for a while and no one's really delved into it and found out what's what and what's worth having and what's not, then I'd love to help out and try and test some new stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks very much.